Carl, so what are the key findings? Uh, well, it runs to volumes and volumes, so I can't uh, claim to have read all of it just yet. But this is something that excites, as you can hear from the demonstration behind me, extreme passion. This report itself is written in very restrained Whitehall language, but for all that, it is absolutely devastating. So let me take you through some of those key points that you're asking about. Uh, so John Chilcott says uh, that we have concluded the UK chose to join the invasion of Iraq before the peaceful options had been exhausted. Mil military action was not a last resort. Uh, the judgments about the severity of the threat from weapons of mass destruction were presented with a certainty that was not justified. Uh, the planning and preparations for Iraq after the war were wholly inadequate and the government failed to achieve its stated objectives. It's, it says this was essentially an ill-conceived, inadequately planned venture uh, carried out by a military force that was not sufficient, that should have been reinforced through the course of the occupation, but wasn't, uh, and that failed in its own terms. And much of the blame for this lies at the door of Tony Blair. It is quite clear from some of the notes and memos published today for the first time between Tony Blair and President George Bush that Mr Blair was thinking about A, regime change and B, getting involved in a war long before that was made public. That There is one note in particular uh, that, that I should draw your attention to. It, it was thought to have gone missing for a while, but the Chilcot Inquiry has found it. it. It was written in July 2002 from Tony Blair uh, to George Bush. This is six months before the war, more than that, in fact, and he begins the note with, I will be with you, whatever. So this is a devastating report into the Iraq war. So w having heard this devastating report, what happens next? Where does this leave Tony Blair? Well, John Chilcott was very clear today that it was not for him to judge the legality of the decision to go to war. And I think it is quite clear already that the International War Crimes Tribunal do not think that they uh, have the authority to put him on trial. Now, many of the people you can hear here will want Tony Blair to go on trial for something, and there are MPs in Parliament who want that too. So it may be that they look at an alternative way to try and uh, bring him to some kind of justice that could involve uh, accusing him of, of malfeasance in public office. But for the time being, I don't think there is a prospect of him being tried for actual war crimes. All right, Carl, thank you very much.